during the last 24 hours, a worrying sign was detected in the town of Greenavik in Iceland, as two sensors placed in close proximity to the recent cracks that cut through the town detected elevated levels of sulfur dioxide gas. Sulfur dioxide is almost a distinctly volcanic gas which, when detected, almost always indicates that some form of magma exists in the top 1,000 meters or approximately 3,281 feet of the crust. As a result, everyone who was briefly allowed back into the town to pick up belongings was told to get out and Greenavik was once again evacuated. In the case of the Reckoness Peninsula, sulfur dioxide is typically only detected when magma is within a mere 100 meters of the surface, meaning this figure might represent that molten rock is once again at shallow depths underneath the town of Greendevik. However, there is also a less worrying explanation why elevated levels of this volcanic gas were detected in town. As, in the last 24 hours, the weather has created sustained wind speeds of more than 20 miles per hour which were notably blowing towards the west. This may have transported degassing sulfur dioxide from still cooling lava flows that were in place during Figuerdal's VX 2021, 2022, and 2023 eruptions into the town. Yet, we are not sure which is the case, so authorities are correctly deciding to err on the side of caution. While it was yesterday revealed that the volume of magma involved in the current unrest is 70 million cubic meters, we now know how much this figure is growing each day. As, between November 12th and November 13th, the amount of magma being input into the underlying dike was estimated to be a fairly sizable 75 cubic meters per second. This translates to an increase of 270,000 cubic meters of molten rock each hour, or 6.48 million cubic meters each day. Thus, if the rate of magma intruding into the lengthy dike continues at the exact same rate, the total volume of magma involved will reach one-tenth of a cubic kilometer, or 100 million cubic meters, early on November 17th. The rate of earthquakes of magnitude 2 or higher, aka earthquakes large enough that people can potentially feel them, has reached the lowest they have been in 17 days. For comparison, the average 48-hour time span consisted of 67.8 earthquakes of such a minimum magnitude since October 25th, yet the last 48 hours only consisted of 17 such earthquakes. These earthquakes have primarily been centered along a 3-kilometer stretch of ground between the very northern end of Greenavik and a spot 1,400 meters east of the northernmost spot on a feature known as Thorburn, specifically at a depth of 2 to 5 kilometers. If an eruption was to hypothetically occur in the next 24 hours, this area would mark the most likely site. Once again, the decreased amount of earthquakes in the short term is not necessarily a cause for celebration, as both a sudden decrease or a sudden increase in the rate of earthquakes can signal that a volcanic eruption could be about to begin. A sudden increase could indicate increased movement of magma via the expansion of gas as the molten rock rises which fractures overlying rock, generating earthquakes, or, in certain locations, such as the Reckoness Peninsula, the top 2-3 to three kilometers of the crust do not easily produce earthquakes, creating what is known as an aseismic zone. Thus, if a rapidly rising intrusion of molten rock was to all of a sudden pass from a seismic to a seismic zone, the number of earthquakes would suddenly drop. However, I want to note something regarding the damaging cracks which have ripped through the town of Greendevik. It appears that some of these very same cracks existed by the time aerial images were taken in 1957 and, in my opinion, may have been filled in at one point in the subsequent years. In other words, the extensional rift features which formed on November 10th were, for the most part, merely expansions of cracks which already existed there. You can find many similar features across the Reckoness Peninsula. In other news, a complete drone ban was put in place across the following regions. Additionally, numerous regional roads are completely closed off that lead towards the town of Greendevik. As a final note, I would like to thank this channel's new patron, Jesse Wendell, for supporting this channel.